Hello, my front porch friend. It's good to see you today. Well, I don't even know how to tell you how hot it is out here today, but I am in a very special place. And I had to come here because I have a word for you and for me to talk to you about this word. I had to come over here. It's actually down from the valley. If, if you just go what we would just call a, across the holler, so to speak, from the valley, you would come up to this awesome, beautiful home place of Brad and Sonia Stewart. They actually are on my staff. They're like a son and daughter to me, very, very close. And uh, they have the most awesome garden. He has just the garden of my dreams, the way I wish my garden would look. And it's just a, it's just a beautiful place. Look over here and I'll show you this really quick. Stay with me. They have got animals all over. Look at these cute little quail. They're just, they not the cutest. Is this not just wonderful? Anyway, she has quail eggs. I'd never eaten them till the other day. And oh gracious, I never knew what I'd been missing in life. But anyway, I just wanted to come out here because this word that I heard for you today, don't you love the rooster? I'm trying to talk to my, hus my husband into chickens for the valley. I haven't quite got there yet, but we are working on it, hopefully soon. But anyway, I, this word that I heard for you this morning was so clear, and it, the word came with specific instructions from the Lord for you, and that's what brought me here. So come over here first. I want to show you the word, and then we'll follow through on what he told me to tell you. All right, I'm going to come in the shade. Oh, because it is so hot. Here is the word that I heard. If you have your Bible, you can look at it with me. In fact, the King James is wonderful. Now, I have my Bible with me. That's, of course, New Living Translation. But we're going to start there. And I want you to hear this word. Even as I'm, even as I'm reading it to you, those of you that are praying for the return of someone you love, Maybe it's a child, maybe it's a, a husband or a loved one. And of course, this, this word is, it relates to any circumstance of your life that you are praying about, but especially those of you believing for the return of a prodigal. This word is going to be very clear. The word initially came out of Jeremiah 31, 15, all right? It says this from the Lord to you. A cry is heard in Ramah, deep anguish and bitter weeping. Rachel, or Rahab, re weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children are gone. But now this is what the Lord says to you. I'm reading from the Bible. Thus says the Lord to you, do not weep any longer. For I will reward you. Your children will come back to you. Just, I just want you to look at those words for yourself. Your children will come back to you from the distant land of the enemy. There is hope in your future, says the Lord. Your children will come again to their own land. Hallelujah. You know, I love the King James that says, your children will come again to their own border. Oh, this is such a word of hope. There's three things I want you to notice, first of all, that I heard for you. Number one, this scripture is talking about a mother, Rachel. That's you. A praying wife, a praying mother, whatever it is you're praying about, but especially praying mothers. This is Rachel. <coughs> Watch. Refusing to be comforted because her children are gone. Number one, refusing to be comforted. I believe when, you've, when you are a mother of faith and the enemy has come in to take your children, what do you do? You refuse to be comforted. In other words, you just make up your mind. Excuse me. You make up your mind. You know what? 
Don't try to comfort me out of this. Don't try to talk me out of my faith stand. Don't try to make me believe that I've just got to accept this and live the rest of my life letting the enemy just have what means more to me than anything in the whole world. No, I refuse to be comforted by words that just tell me, oh, it's just what all kids do. You know, that's just what everybody does. You're just going to have to accept this. You know, I know that they're living way out of the will of God for their life, but you know, they've got their own choice. And, and you're just going to have to accept that and just go on. No, you refuse to be comforted. If they are out of the will of God for their life, if your situation is not the will of God for your life, you refuse the comforting words of anybody or the enemy that's trying to talk you out of your stand of faith. I love that. It starts off by saying, Rachel, this mother refused to be comforted. And because of that, you know what? It says the next verse, so thus says the Lord to you. There's some faith found in, I'm not going to be comforted. There's faith in that. And when he sees faith, when God sees faith, he responds. And he did respond right there. He says, thus says the Lord to you. First of all, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears. For you, your, the King James says, for your work will be rewarded. Oh, I just love that. I'm already sweating. Who cares? Watch. I may melt while I talk. Don't worry about it. Refuse to be comforted. Number two, you're going you're gonna to hear from the Lord after that. And here's what he says. Refrain your, vo your, your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work shall be rewarded. That's your first promise. What does that mean? Refrain, re re refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears. What does that mean? It means don't grieve with no hope. I know what it's like to grieve over a wayward child just like you. It doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. It just means that in your in this grieving, don't let it be the kind of grieving that just says, oh, it's just over. Oh, nothing's going to ever be done. Oh, woe is me. Oh, it's just awful my life. I don't even want to live anymore. Oh, don't, don't do that kind of weeping. Stop that kind of weeping. That's what the Lord says. First of all, stop that kind of weeping. Watch. He says, for your work will be rewarded. What kind of work, Lord? He tells you, he tells you, he tells you in Hebrews eleven six. he says in that verse, without faith, it is impossible to please God for he that comes to God must believe that he is watch and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Your work is going to be rewarded. What kind of work? Diligently seeking work. Oh, come on. He, the Lord says, I'm going to reward you when you diligently seek me. When you refuse to be comforted, you make up your mind. I'm going to diligently seek. I'm going to seek God with all my heart. Oh, come on. I'm going to believe God. He that comes to God must believe that he is God and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek. And then look what comes after diligently seeking. <laughs> this is your promise. He says here, get ready. I love it. Your children will come back to you. This is the reward of diligently seeking. Your children will come back to you from the distant land of the enemy. They're going to come back from drug addiction. They're going to come back from sexual perversion. They're going to come back from deception and rebellion. They're going to come back. Yes, they are. They're going to come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope in your future, says the Lord. Your children will come again to their own land. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to look at something to give you hope. Look right here. Look right here. You see down here? Let me move this. I'm sorry about all the bad shots. But look right there. Look at that verse. This was the, can you see that date right there on that? It says July the 14th, 2015. I wrote that in the middle of impossibility for my daughter. I, I wrote that date down because this was the promise God gave me. I want you to look at that date because I want it to give you faith that if he did it for me, he's going to do it for you. You've got a promise. You've got to promise that if you refuse to be comforted and if you do the work of diligently seeking God, he's going to reward you. And you've got to promise that there's hope in your future. What does that mean? Hope, it means things are going to change. That's what hope is. It's the simple belief that things will change. That's what hope is. And God tells you right there, it's a promise to you. It's your word today. 
he says, your children will come back to you. They're going to come back from the land of the enemy. For there's hope in your future. In other words, things are going to change in the future. Your children will come back to their own land, to their own border. Now, you got a promise. That's the word God told me to give you today. What are you going to do with that promise? Number one, you're going to act on it in the first part of the instructions, refusing to be comforted and seeking God. Now then, here's what you do. That promise is what the Lord told me to tell you is a seed. It's just a seed. Because a lot of people say, well, I've had promises before and I've not seen them come to pass. Mark 4 tells us the word is a seed, the word of God, and that the sower sows the seed. The sower is you and me. And God's word to us, when we get a promise from God, you've been given a seed. And it's so funny because this is a seed, this is a corn seed. I got it from my mother's house this morning. And this one little corn seed, can you see it right there? Look at it, hon. There's a little corn. It's weird that it's red, but I like that because corn's yellow. But I just decided, you know what that means? That just means our promises are covered in the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I love that. So here's a corn seed. Now, even though this little seed is single by itself, and to be honest with you, it looks kind of dry and withered. It doesn't look, I don't see any life it, in it. It's just dry little withered seed. But there is life beaming, living inside this seed. I could lay it here for years. And if it just laid here for years, when the seed gets into the right environment, oh, come on, when it gets in the right environment, things start changing. You put this little seed in the right place and the right stuff begins to happen to it. What springs out of this seed is a miracle. When you get a promise from God and you've been given a seed. Now, if I go up here and I lay this seed, because here's how people do promises sometimes. They get a promise from God and they just like, oh, well, isn't that nice? They just take their promises, the Bible. They're full of promises. They've been given a rhema word like you just were. And they just lay it over to the side. And they don't act on it. They just lay, oh, then they, I got a promise from God. They don't do nothing but just keep murmuring, keep weeping, keep grieving. God gave them the word. You, you, you were given a seed. But you just took that seed like that right there. And you just laid it up there on the bar. And you didn't, you didn't put it nowhere. You just left it right there, right there. You just laid your promise up there. And you just go about your day, go about your life. You got your promise. It's there. Yeah, there it is. Still there. You just laid it up there. Now you could let you can just let years go by. No, it ain't gonna never grow right there. It's gonna sit right here. Nothing's gonna happen to it. If you come back 25 years from now, if you ain't put it this in the right environment, it's gonna still look like this in 25 years. Ain't gonna be nothing. Even though it's full of life. Even though it's in the even though it could bring a miracle. No, you didn't do nothing with it. You just laid it down. You didn't do nothing with it. That's how people do the word of God. God will give them a promise. They don't do anything with it. They just keep griping and murmuring and weeping and moaning and groaning. And nothing's ever going to change in my life. It's just look what happened to me. Look what the devil's done in my life. Yeah, I read my Bible every once in a while. Well, it takes more than that. Everything you ever receive from God, you receive when faith is in action. Everything from salvation. Salvation is only received by faith. Anything. That's why it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews eleven six, and And see, what you do, when you've got a promise like you've just gotten, nope, me and you're not going to leave it in the barn. I want you to think of it as I'm going to lay it right there. And I'm going to, here's your promise that I just gave you right there. I'm going to put that seed. Can you see that? I'm just going to lay that seed right there on your promise. That's it. Look at it. Did I get that shot? Now, I'm going to pick up your promise like a seed. What are we going to do with it? I'm going to show you. Come on. Let's go. Here's what you do with the word. You got your promise. We ain't going to leave it nowhere. No, no way. We got our word from God. My kids are coming home. That's what God said. And that's what I believe. So what do you do? I got to take this promise and I got to put it in the right environment. So here's a good environment. I'm going to take this seed. I ain't going to leave it in the barn. Uh-uh. I am going to take this seed and I'm going to plant it in the soil. And then I'm going to cover it up. Okay, look at that. See that? 
Can you, hope I'm getting the right shot. I can't tell what I'm filming. I'm gonna cover it up. There we go. There's the seed. It's down there. All right, now. What does that mean? It means you've taken your promise and you've put it right in the middle of the circumstance. Put it right in the middle of the mess. Put it right in the middle of the dirt of the, of the, of the circumstance that you're dealing with. Come on, put it right in the middle of impossibility in, in the situation you're in. Now, what happens now is that seed, we, if you can't see it, it's under there. Can't see it. Can't see it's working, but it's there. Now, if I just leave it there and, and, and walk away, it's still going to die. Nope. You know what we got to do? We got to believe for the, everything about this has got to be right for us to get the miracle out of that seed. That's, that's the potential of it having. What does that mean? It's got to rain. We got, sometimes you got to pray for rain. It's got to rain. That sun right there that's bursting, beaming down on me right now. I need that sun. I need the rain. I got to have a lot of things to bring forth my miracle. What does that mean for you? It means once you've got a promise from God and you plant that promise and the promise God gave, gave you into the soil of your impossibility, into the soil of your circumstance of a prodigal child, a prodigal husband, or whatever it is, healing, whatever it is that you're believing God for, financial thing, you plant that promise into the circumstance. How do you do that? Speak the word to it. Your, 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 your seed is the word. So you just look at that thing and you speak the word into the situation. It's just like planting it right there. Now then, what does the rain and the sun mean for your promise? It means it's the prayer. My prayer. Honey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I planted my seed. I planted it. I'm looking at my circumstance every day. I can look at it, but I'm going to pray. Oh, I'm going to seek the word. I'm going to speak the word of God into that situation every day. My child is coming home. They're coming back from the land of the enemy in Jesus' name. I do not, I am not moved by the natural. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what they've said. I'm not moved by the lie they've told me. I'm not moved by the fact they don't even want to talk to me. I'm not moved by being blocked from their Facebook and Instagram and everything else. I'm not moved. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what other people are telling me. I'm not moved by what the doctor tells me. I'm moved by the word of God. And God said that with God, nothing's impossible. I am moved by the fact that God said, my child's coming back from the land of the enemy. I'm only moved and I declare in Jesus' name, I speak to that seed and I say to that seed in Jesus' name, you will live and not die. I speak to the word of God in this circumstance and I say in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, my child will come back to the, from the land of the enemy. I declare my child will walk in the will. Now, when I'm doing that, what am I doing? Honey, it's raining. That's what I'm doing. That's the light of God's word shining on the seed. That's the rain of his spirit of refreshing going into the, into the circumstance that it's hiding under. Come on. You can't tell it. But, but if I left this seed here with the right rain and the sun, oh, that seed's going to begin to move and work. And even I, though I can't see it, I can't see it for a while. It's going to be a minute. Even though I can't see it, that little seed down there, it's living and it's moving and it's sprouting and it's working underground before I even know it's working. It's gaining root and it's building a little root system under there and it's doing, I mean, it's living. Something's happening. Something's happening. Even though I can't see it, something's happening. And even though you can't see it right now in your child, something's happening every time you pray. Even though you can't see it, even though you can't feel it, even though you see, that's what faith is. A lot of people give up right here and don't even come back, check on it no more and they're they don't even care that weeds grow up and it dies. No, no, no. But if you want fruit from it, you're going to have to keep, keep watering it and keep it in the right place because you know what happens? You know what happens? This is going to take the faith part. This is what a farmer does. He doesn't plant that seed if he cares about it and then just forget it. No, that farmer comes out here and keeps the weeds away. That means you're going to have to keep some, some bad people away. You're going to have to keep some other opinions away. You're going to have to weed that thing to make sure around your circumstance, you're going to have to keep out the discouragement, keep out what television's telling you, keep out what the natural report's telling you, keep the weeds out all from around your promise and your seed. What else you got to do? Keep, keep watching. Faith is expectancy. Faith means I'm coming out here every day and I'm looking. Oh, it ain't, it ain't through yet. And that means I just got to keep praying. Come on. It means that's what faith is. Faith is expectancy. I've got a promise. I've got a seed. It's in the ground. I'm coming out here. Oh, it's been three weeks now, but no, it ain't, it ain't through yet. I got to go keep praying. I got to keep praying. I got to keep standing. Oh, I got to come back out here. 
Oh, it ain't through yet. It's been six months, but I, I'm, oh, it's been four years, but I, it's not through yet, but I know that seed's working under there. Come on. Come on. That's what Elijah did. Come on. I believe it was Elijah. It's in like first Kings 18, I think verse 41 ish that Elijah and his servant was praying for rain. I love that faith and Elijah's on his knees and he's got his head between his knees and he's praying and he's telling his servant, go see if you see anything. Nope. Don't see nothing. The servant comes back. No, nothing. Elijah. Well, well, Elijah keeps praying, keeps praying. That's what faith does. He keeps praying. Elijah says, go back again. He goes back again. Uh, I, there ain't nothing, Elijah. Elijah doesn't quit. Well, it must not be the will of God to get rain. No, Elijah knew he had a word. Elijah had, 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 had a word from God. It was going to rain. So he just keeps praying in the middle of the drought, in the middle of the impossibility, praying, 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 praying. Now go back again seven times till the finally the seventh time the servant comes back. Elijah, it ain't much. It's a little bitty cloud about the size of a man's hand. <laughs> Elijah jumps up. <coughs> he says, that's all I need. That's all. I just need a little. I just need a little sign. That's all I've got to have to believe and know. He, he, the Bible says they took off running. Elijah said, get off. We, it's coming. It's coming now. <coughs> Galatians, the sixth chapter tells you this. Don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you're going to reap if you faint not. Honey, if you keep that seed right there in the ground of its circumstance, making sure it's watered with the rain of your prayers, making sure the light of his word is shining on it out of your mouth every day, there's going to be a day I don't know how long it'll take I just know that as long as it's down there, you got to keep faith that it's working. Faith is the substance, things I'm just hoping for, the evidence of things I cannot see. What is my hope that that seed's in the ground? What is my evidence that seed's working? It's right down there. It's my faith. Galatians says, don't be weary in well-doing for in due season. How long, Karen? I don't know. Until. Until what? Until your circumstance gives way to the power of that seed. Till your circumstance gives way to the power of the life in the word. That seed has life in it. And in due season, after time, look what happens. Out of the ground, out of the circumstances, springs this life right here. That little seed produces this right here, that coming up out of that ground is coming up this beautiful plant that's going to produce food. It's going to produce what happens? The corn that produces what? More seed. In due season, if you don't give up, you're going to reap a harvest. This came right here, came out of that little seed. And just one little seed, look what it gives. And not only that, but with each, each uh, ear of corn that comes off of this thing, what does it have? If you leave it, more seed, more promises. That in turn, listen, it's going to not only feed others, feed you, but feed others. In other words, when this thing is over, I'm going to get out of the sun. When this thing is over for you and your seed produces what's in it, you're going to have enough of a miracle and a story to tell, just like me. When I planted that promise God gave me, he gave me that word too, out of Jeremiah 31. And I planted it in the impossibility of a prodigal daughter. But I decreed it for, for almost two, over, over two years, closer to three, decreeing the word, letting it rain. And it produced finally life after a while. That wasn't only my miracle, but now then, I've got a harvest to share with the world. I want to tell everybody what God did for me. And in doing so, I believe for a harvest for your children and your grandchildren. That's going to happen to you. When your child comes home, y'all are going to have a story to tell. When your marriage is, re is restored, honey, y'all are going to spend the rest of your lives telling your friends and your family. This is not just going to produce enough for you. It's going to produce enough for all of the world that God has given you. All of your sphere of influence. Get ready. Get ready. If you'll stay true to your promise, you are going to have a miracle to tell about. 
Lord, I've shared the word you told me to tell my friend. I pray today that her, her or his faith is so strengthened today that they have hope in knowing their child is coming again from the land of the enemy. Their body will be healed because you've provided healing. That there's a breakthrough for their finances because you are our provider. And all of these things have a word to go with it. Lord, thank you for the promises of your word. We stand on them today. Your word is life to us. And we believe today that we will reap because we will not faint in Jesus' name. You do not give up. He says you will reap if you faint not. So, sweetheart, you will never give up that seed. Never. You will never faint. And because of that, you're going to reap a harvest. Because even when you can't see it, he's working. Even when you can't see it, he's working. He never stops. He never stops working. He'll never stop. He'll never stop working. I can assure you, he will never faint. And you can't either. Be strengthened, my dear friend. I love you. Comment below. Please comment below. Send this with a friend and share it. I love you so much. I'll see you next week. Till then, follow uh, Brad and Sonia. It's on their Instagram with their beautiful farm. It's called Sanctuary Outdoors, by the way. And you can follow all of their story about this beautiful garden, Sanctuary Outdoors. I love you. See you next week. Bye-bye.